Well, and, and there are a lot of people to watch. It's not just the state. The biggest portion of property taxes, as I understand it, is, uh, go, uh, is the school districts. Yeah. And also, you've got the park board, uh, well, in, in, in uh, Hennepin County, at least, you've got the Three Rivers Park District. You've got a number of people with their hands in the pot, like the cities. Yeah, and don't forget their Economic Development Authority, which oh, is also Oh, there's port authorities. EDA, there's, there, there's all kinds of things. Hennepin County Railroad that Association. That have levy uh, ability that can uh, uh, jump in and fill the void, so to speak, of taking that money that the, uh, that the uh, state, state is, state state is giving yeah. back. So there's a lot of things to watch because a lot of those decisions are made at the local level rather than the state level. Yeah, but you're right. It doesn't change the system. It doesn't change the formula. It doesn't change the exceptions. It doesn't change uh, anything significant that would have an effect in the long term. Right. Nothing structural. Yeah. No. And it, no, it doesn't. And, you know, I mean, most people really don't even realize what some of the things are in this property tax system and how, and how the homesteads are tracked by Social Security numbers and how these are matched every year. And the assessors are given these lists of these things, and you have to go out and see if why somebody shows up on, you know, on two properties with a homestead. And, and all this stuff, I mean, just to, just to uh, administer the homestead in Hennepin County is about a $500,000 uh, expense. Wow. And so some of these Just things could be involved yeah. because you know it's, some of these could be included in a in in a, in actually a, a reforming of the property tax system where it would make this you know much easier to administer and actually there'd be a lot of benefits to that to whatever administration is in because if you make something simpler and more transparent I believe that the people are not going to forget that. And, and well, they're going to they're going to like that about that administration, and it may even get them votes. Right. Uh, yeah. So uh, you know that's another uh, a whole layer of discussion is the very complexity of the property tax system eats up money. It does. So it's as bad. It's well, as bad as the income tax. Ralph, let me ask you yeah. a, a couple simple a one simple sure. question. What are what do you see? I mean, we've touched on a number of different things. What do you see as um, viewer in charge? What's like the two or three things that reforms first and foremost that you'd like to see? Is there a one or two or three things that we just really need to do first? Well, I think, I think, and I've got a list here of ten things that oh, we're, we're okay. going to pass out to legislators <laughs> and everything. Right. But actually, I think one of the most important things to do is to reduce these classifications back to the intended four. And I don't know if you could ever do that completely because there's residential and commercial industrial. Uh, there's an other classification and agricultural classification. And these are actually the original four that were started when they started having property taxes way back when we became a state. I think they had personal property too. So I'd like, you know, we'd like to see that happen. And essentially that, that would be the main thing. Then um, everything else really builds off that but we'd like to, I would like to also see a system that people can actually understand what's happening with it. And so those would probably be the two main things. By reducing those classifications, at least somebody could come in there and say, hey, um, I can really see how I got to be this classification. I mean, the governor's had a flow chart. They had a flow chart in one of his reports. I think it was Commissioner Myron Franz's went around with his three-legged stool explaining how they wanted to have reform. Well, they've got a chart in there about how you classify property, a flow chart of agricultural, and it's full of boxes. It's an, you know, the whole sheet is just full of this. If this happens, that happens, on and on and on. You know, you can't figure it out. So, so is the three-legged stool the sales tax, income tax, property? That what right, you're talking yeah. about? Okay, I've seen that. But anyway, that's you know that would be the main thing. Huh. Is, so there's fifty. Take fifty-five classifications down to four. There's some. Yeah, we're supposed <laughs> to have four. Oh wow. You know, they're special for little seasonal resorts, and I understand the need for some of these things, but I think it could still be incorporated into just one simplified thing. Well, you know, businesses have been hit hard with property tax increases the last couple of years in particular. And the, there was another thing that uh, the legislature did. It was remove the homestead market value credit. Can you explain what that is and what that meant? Well, essentially... Uh, 
Every, first of all, there's, there's no difference on taxes on a residential house over about 413,000, 420, it's right around 420,000. Under that figure, um, f the state was actually giving the county to distribute to the cities and everything. They were giving them um, a credit. And so what they did, and that, I believe that accounted for about $400 million. And so what happened was, is instead of this credit for the homestead, you know, like at my house, it's a couple hundred dollars. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have a real expensive house. And um, the maximum of it is a 300, I think 70 on a $70,000 house, which would be a condo or something. So anyway, that was taken off the state books and that's how they gained for almost half a billion dollars. And what that was is the then, budget deficit. so then when you yeah. they take like my house and say my house is worth two hundred thousand dollars, and there's a factor you figure in there, and uh, some market value is excluded from what I pay taxes on. So instead of me paying on two and two hundred thousand dollars, now I would pay on let's just say one hundred eighty thousand dollars of value. Right. Is that and, why your tax statement says you have a market value and you have like a resale that? Because if you look at your taxes, there'll be two different values be a taxable right. value and a market yeah. value. This comes and off that gap is what was removed. Yeah. There could be some other programs off that too for disabled veterans and other things. But anyway, that gap, so what happened was is that the money that the cities collect on the houses, um, all that $400 million was picked up by the commercial properties, the uh, apartment properties, the houses over 430,000 for, and uh, apartments, all the other properties yeah. picked up that across the whole state. So the, the state balanced the budget. So the, the cost went from the state to the local commercial property owner. Commercial or houses over $430,000 and apartments and all other, anything that wasn't a, anything that wasn't a house under 430. Because I know that locally businesses getting hit hard has been a big, big issue and um, you know, do you think that that was a good thing that that was taken off? Is that a good long-term thing or is it, because it's basically, again, the state shifting money around. I mean, is that a good thing to do or a not so good thing to do? Well, I think, I think that what people have been, a lot of people have been working toward, including the realtors and other people have been, what's called a house is a house. All single family houses would have the same factors. So basically, if you just made them all equal and you didn't, um, I'm not answering your question directly. Well, I, I, think, <laughs> I think that it, 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 uh, they missed a chance to actually make all the houses equal and not have the extra administration of having that homestead credit. They could still be termed a homestead but not to have the tax difference on those. Uh, I think that... Uh, so they did half their job. I think so. <laughs> yeah. that, in my opinion, they did half the job. Hmm. I don't know. It's a sure. complex issue, isn't it? Well, it, yes. And, and just unraveling the complexity would be a good start because things become more visible and more transparent to the extent that you can understand them. And people just don't give up. They just they say, oh. right as it is right now. People throw their hands up and they say, oh, where do you start? Well, I'm you an know? assessor, and I, I talk to people, and I I can 30 seconds, and you watch, you lose them. Right. Just, they're they, you know they lose Eyes their attention. Eyes glaze over. And, yep. uh, yeah. Kind of like me at an art fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Well, there's a, there's a lot to be done, and there is an opportunity for people uh, that do want to know more and do want to have an impact on the system to to channel that effort through uh, RPT Minnesota. If I could suggest it, everyone should call, actually go down and see their state senator, their state representative. Tell them to check us out, but tell them that we support property tax reform. We'd like to see a simpler more transparent property tax system. And that is a very important thing they could do. And it's so easy to go talk to your elected officials. Right, if you let your legislators know that you're concerned about it, and it don't heightens don't their tell attention. Them, don't tell them I sent you. I gotta use a fake name if I call Yeah, them. yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, there's no fake name on this show. Again, this is the Andrew Richter Show. I wanna thank uh, Rolf for you're being welcome. here today. Thank and you, for Andrew to be able to put this on 
and start his fifth season uh, with this program. We hope that it uh, helps you stay informed and perhaps motivates you to take some action. So for now, have a good day.